Hi everybody, welcome into uh, Siren Records Monterey. This is Fresh Catch Friday and Cass is here and I'm here and uh, we're ready to talk about picks of the week if you'd like to kick us off and tell us what's good. Yes, okay, this week I have the new Foles album, Everything Not Saved Will Be Lost, part one. Uh, Foles is from England, Oxford, England. Uh, they've been doing it for quite some time. They've been on Sub Pop for quite a while. This is, um, this is probably one of their most ambitious albums they've done. I've, I used to not be too big of a fan of theirs because I would see them at like every festival I'd go to. They're, they're a classic festival band, especially outside lands. They play it like every year. But uh, this album really won me over. It's really um, very catchy, very dancey, but it's not, uh, it, it's an indie pop album, but it's not so. Uh, you know, simple like most indie pop albums. There's a lot of the textures in the guitars, the drum production's really crisp, the bass tones are very loud and booming, and his vocals, I've always liked his vocals, he's a very unique singer, I can't remember his name right now, but um, just a very strong album, like I said, very dancey, makes you want to move, and uh, the album cover is absolutely stunning, and I was reading somewhere that uh, I'm sure you've seen this kind of thing on the side, it's like this uh, this sleeve, it's in, or this slip, it's inspired by this thing called obi, uh, like Japanese something or other. Like basically, a lot of Japanese albums, like DVDs, CDs, vinyls, they all have this like strip on the side to add like information. And a lot of artists these days take inspiration from that. Like the Last Horrors album, Grimes does it too. You've seen all over the place all this Japanese like text on the side, and uh, Foles clearly taking some inspiration from it as well. And uh, I think I mentioned this is part one. Part two is supposed to come late this year. But uh, if part two is anything like this one, then they're going to have quite a, quite a strong year. This is a very solid album. So I'm hoping that's like a whole like new album, not just like remixes of this or something like that. That would be kind of lame. So this is 2095. So come check it out. It's a pretty great album cover, I agree. It is, yeah. And you know, it's like best. you just can't beat Japanese packaging. I'm not surprised that people are finally catching on to imitate that because it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty superior beautiful. I don't in know every what way. It, is about it. it just looks. Well, great. I mean, just everything that they do in Japan is superior packaging. Even the candy <laughs> looks really so much better, yeah. right? It's stuff Japanese like that. Are great. Pretty it's good. Devoted. Attention to detail. We like that. Absolutely. Okay, so my pick for you this week is Sasami. This is self-titled, and this is on Domino. And you know, I always accuse Cass for being a sacred, uh, sacred bones whore. I got, I guess I got a cop to it. I'm kind of a Domino whore. I really like oh, a boy. lot of stuff that comes on there. And Matador. I, I mean, I swing for both of those. So anyway, all right. So Sasami Ashworth. She's an LA-based musician, and she's made her name over the years being the synth player for Cherry Glazer. Uh, but her debut record here, it's kind of a melding of synthesizer and guitar reverb, and um, it really kind of embodies the shoegaze scene. In fact, a lot of this you are going to harken back to Slovakia era slow dive in your head. If that was something that you know you are into, you're probably going to uh, kind of make the parallel there. There. Anyway, um, you know, it's kind of easy to mistake this as a gentle, soothing album, but once you start listening to the lyrics and they start coming up out of the ground, you kind of realize this is some kind of serious shit that's going on here. And um, she's uh, really, really reveals herself here. It's pretty interesting. And um, there, it's a, there's a nice thing too that track called Adult Contemporary kind of features an ensemble cast, but like uh, Hand Habits, Meg Duffy is on there with her. Oh, and um, yeah. Nice. So, um, there's, let's see, there is a, the single Callus, uh, yeah, is the one especially that you're going to feel like you're listening to a slow dive thing there. Um, it's a limited edition red vinyl. It comes with MP3s and it is $20.95 and you should check this girl out. Oh, I never got the chance to listen to that this morning. Now I wish I had saying that sounds like slow dive. Yeah, well, you see what band. you think. Anyway, I'm sure you got some other stuff you want to yes. yammer on about. Well, I'll talk about this first, say okay. the best for last. Um, Children of Bodom, they are a Finnish death metal, melodic death metal group. Uh, this is kind of a... Uh, <laughs> Kicking a spleen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great track names on here. <laughs> Knuckle Duster. <laughs> but uh, this band is kind of like a childhood band for me. I remember when I was really young, I was playing like Guitar Hero or something and one of their songs was on there and I really liked it and I went on to check out their music and I'm, I'm a big fan of theirs. This is their 10th studio album. They've been around a very long time and um, they're just kind of a, I think the thing that makes them unique, uh, sets them apart from all those other death metal, melodic death metal groups is they have a synth player and his synth tone is very distinct and um, you pretty much know it's Children of Bodom when you hear that uh, synth come in. 
And uh, the synth player, he doesn't just do like chords and stuff, he does solos too. Like a lot of their songs, just, you know, classic death metal riff, and then main frontman Alexi Laiho will come through with a solo, like a guitar solo, but then the keyboard player will do like a crazy keyboard solo. That's like their classic sound, and they've, they've pretty much stuck to it their whole career. And, uh, you know, maybe if um, that's too samey for you, I could understand, but I just love their sound so much that I can never really get enough of it. So I listened to this this morning. Like I said, pretty much children about them as usual, but the solos, they're incredible. The songs are catchy, hard hitting. So if you want some slightly melodic death metal, check this out. Um, yeah, it's limited to a thousand copies, purple vinyl. It's very uh, flimsy for some reason. I was talking to Cass, but you can just bend that. Sell thing. the record, Cass. For some reason. It must be like 100 gram or something, 80 gram vinyl. But uh, either way, I'm sure it looks beautiful. The cover's pretty cool. So, how much is it? Check it out. It's uh, twenty five ninety five. Oh, that's expensive for like, a, you yeah, know. for a, for a very thin record, All right. basically a flexi disc. Hey, but worth it for kicking the spleen alone, I would think, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the album's called Hexed too. I don't think I mentioned. Oh, okay. For some reason. Okay, next. This is a really great album. I was almost gonna pick this for my my pick of the week. Stella Donnelly. I didn't know who she was till today. Uh, came in. I saw she was on Secretly Canadian, a label that we all love. And uh, I thought the album cover is kind of interesting, so I checked it out. And basically, she is yet another Australian female powerhouse, uh, if you didn't have enough already. But however, she is definitely, a, of all the ones I've heard lately, she's probably my favorite. I know it's Julia Jacqueline, Courtney Barnett, and all that. But uh, this album, this is her debut album. Um, it's a very uh, relevant of the times album. A lot of her uh, lyrics deal with uh, sexual harassment. There's one song about rape on here that's very heavy. Boys will be boys. For, for, yeah, boys will be boys. The lyrics on that, pretty incredible. And uh, there's a thing she says at the end. She's like, I'm like, a, I'm like a morning mower, like someone mowing their lawn. I won't let you rest, which I thought, pretty good lyric. And uh, yeah, basically she's just like, super talented lyricist and her songwriting is really great too you know you can have great lyrics but if the songs are just like kind of forgettable then it's not going to hit hard but uh her guitar playing very good her riffs are very catchy and uh some songs have full instruments some are just like her and a guitar but uh, her like i said her lyrics really hold those songs together just like great themes i think uh maybe a breakup is a common theme on this album too she's singing about someone on here but uh, the way she puts it a lot of the times is very unique, very different than, uh, you know, because you know, themes like this, you know, like um, breakups and stuff like that, it's been done so many times. So when I hear people put a kind of refreshing twist on it, it's pretty compelling. So definitely check her out. Uh, this is on color vinyl. I don't know what color, but uh, it is $17.95. It's a good deal. So check this out. Powerful record very uh, 2019 record for sure so give it a listen yeah we kind of uh had to fight over that one because i think we both like it well we love secretly canadian and we do love our australians so absolutely yeah they're just very nice choice they are all right so i have for you um i got my thing on the wrong side i've got the coat oh, hangers the devil you know and this is on suicide squeeze who i'm also coming to love these days and this is an atlanta trio who's been knocking around for years this is their sixth release actually and um for after 12 years of relentlessly touring and uh you know a steady stream of of EPs and LPs, they finally took a moment to kind of recalibrate and reset. And, you know, their previous albums have always kind of been heavily featuring a, one of the songwriters and they really have their stamp on it. This time, it's finally, they're a cohesive unit and it's really, it's come together for them in that way, which is pretty interesting. And, you know, this is a, a mix of, um, you know, vitriolic punk, playful house party anthems and heart heart-worn ballads all melding together so they kind of do a lot of different things pretty cool band uh, you know limited to 2,000 copies and they're calling this bittersweet vinyl and it is absolutely gorgeous it's like a dark green with kind of a whitish starburst in it I don't know how that makes it bittersweet but we're gonna go with it it's good anyway this is 1895 and uh, so you know check them out really really good stuff yeah I was listening to that this morning too I almost picked that too the guitar playing on that's super wild I remember uh, I was in the office and we have like two speakers on different sides of the room so if something's recorded in uh, mono right 
Like, I remember the guitars when I came in the room, like, the guitars were on one side, and then, like, the drums and vocals were on another, and I just hear, like, these crazy, like, shreddy <laughs> guitar experimental stuff going on in the other other side of the room. Sounds pretty cool. It, it reminded me of, uh, there's, like, a show called Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, and the intro to that, like, the theme song is, like, this wild guitar freak out, and it kind of reminded <laughs> me of that, so. Yeah, it was, it was cool. a good listen. Yeah, it surprised yeah. me. Uh, lastly for you, I've got the new Flight of the Concords, uh, Live in London, this is on Sub Pop. I'm trying to get the glare off of that for you. Um, this New Zealand duo, Brett McKenzie and Jermaine Clement, uh, this is recorded during their 2018 Flight of the Concords tour. Uh, this one was created, or, uh, recorded at Hammersmith Odeon. I believe the HBO special was at the Apollo. So, you know, it's going to be very similar. But uh, here's the thing, you guys. Uh, this has got a bunch of classic favorites and seven new songs on it, over three LPs. Uh, because luckily this is the loser edition that you can get here, which means blue and yellow vinyl for you, which is always a wonderful thing. Um, the, the thing that I'm struggling with on this, you know, they're so funny and they've got such a, a you know, offbeat kind of sense of humor and, and it's, they're so great. And if you ever got into their show and stuff, you know you how much everyone loves them and their songs. But when you're listening to a live recording, a lot of the time when they aren't singing, I think they're doing something funny. And you know, the crowd is like in this hilarious bunch of laughter. And you know, you have no, as a listener, you got no idea what, what's going on. And that was a little frustrating for me. But having said that, still, you know, hilarious as they're singing, you know, and there's audience interaction and that kind of stuff. So it's pretty fun. Um, it's definitely worth it if you're a fan. I don't think they've had anything out since 2009. So this is three LPs for $26.95. Also the cassette, and the cassette is, uh-oh, um, $7.99. Hmm. Nice. Well, three LPs, did, uh, they just got a side A and a side B, so I think there's extra on the vinyl, actually. And, uh, yeah, so goodbye if you uh, are into them. It's, it certainly is worth it. That is my only complaint, is that I don't always know what's going on. But still, good, good solid record, and we do love Sub Pop. So, okay, um, I guess that's uh, moving us on into the, the other stuff. It's kind of a light week, you guys, but... There are some okay. some things here. Uh, sorry, Cass, can you get to that? Yeah. Okay. yeah I find the Concords. I, I think they should have just like cut off those audio parts in between songs, like cut out the in between song banter, you know, unless they're actually saying stuff. Well, uh, otherwise it just yeah, you're right, just loses its. You know, and they kind of are, but actually too, it's always hard with a live recording because it's kind of muddy because it's in a big auditorium, yeah, and yeah. you know, it it was a little bit well anyway. It's not bad. Um, let's go ahead and get started with this. Is this the James Blake here? Yes, okay, it is. first of all, James Blake Assume Form, and this cassette is $12.99. Can you see that, you guys? That's what it looks like. Okay, James Blake. It's got him going like this. Oh, thank you. Thank you for way. recreating the scene for us. That's awesome, In case man. You tell. Oh, okay, do it again. <laughs> That's it. All right, now we got James Brown Mother Load on 180 gram, two LPs for $22.95. Okay. Cool. We have Camp Dogs, Writers in the Hills of Dying Heaven. Is that what that's actually called? Yeah, Writers in the Hills of Dying Heaven. Okay, that's 1995. Mouthful. That's an interesting cover as well, isn't it? Hell of a name, yeah. Hmm. All right. Now we have Eagles, Hell Freezes Over, 180 gram remastered. I was going to say it's remastered because I'm sure they've already had this record come out before. All right, yeah. this is a... Yeah, two LPs. It's thirty three ninety five. It's very expensive, but uh, well, you know that's a big, big name band. I guess they can command that kind of money. Not that they make the prices, but you know what I'm saying. It's the yeah. same as like U two. A lot of their stuff is really pricey. It's just because their label knows that it's a big band exactly, and they can yeah. people are going to shell out. So anyway, I guess. Uh, this is the remastered version of Hell Freezes Over for you there, okay? Now, also, there's some uh, Flight of the Concords cassettes that are in uh, the self-titled one here. Can you see that? Okay, $7.99 for that one. And uh, the one still hasn't come out of the box was I Told You I Was Freaky, also on cassette, $7.99, coming later today. All right, now we've got Mon Le Fuerte Norma. This is two LPs for $24.95. Oh, oops. Um, that, there you go. Sorry. I thought that, yeah. Forgive me, Cass. I screwed you up there. That was me that did that. Uh, two LPs for $24.95. Do you have any idea what this is? It's all in Spanish? Is that? 
Look at, the, not, look at the song <laughs> titles. She's cutting an onion, though. <laughs> oh, oh, well, wait. Maybe that's symbolic for the tears she has shed. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it, no. all this, all the titles are look like they're in Spanish. Is that what it is, Spanish? Yeah. Oh, produced by Omar Rodriguez Lopez. That's the guy from Mars Volta. I'm oh. pretty sure. Okay. So maybe this isn't a pop album. Maybe it's a little freaky. Okay. Who knows? All right. Check it out, though. Now we got Luluk. Dear Hamlin, this is the Loser Edition 1995, which means it's colored vinyl. Do we know? No. Oh, I hate yeah, when we don't yeah, know. Loser, yeah, Loser Editions usually don't like to make it a surprise, so. No, I like to know. We'll see. I always look it up when I'm doing a thing, but all right, I guess you don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> I like the surprise. Not going to go that extra mile, huh? No, Just no, not going to no. do it? <laughs> okay. Bare minimum. All right, now we got Promise Ring. Horse Latitudes. This is on clear vinyl. This one is $20.95 and we did listen to this today and we were, not that we were unimpressed, but it's kind of to me, okay, you will tell what you thought, but I thought it was very like middle of the road indie pop, but the guy's voice was very shouty. I wasn't a yeah, fan of the, of the emo. vocal. Very emo, yeah. But I mean, I thought it was a little overboard shouty, mm -hmm. you know? It wasn't that it was bad, but it was just um, a little bit so what? Yeah, as you far know? as emo goes, these guys aren't my favorite. I mean, we were listening to this basically just sounded like Sunny Day Real Estate ripoff, but you know, that's most emo, so. Okay. Check it out. I mean, they're still good. If you still like emo, this is like a classic group, so check it out. Just not for, not for me or Lorraine. Yeah, but that's okay. All right, now we have a new album from the, well, this older band Tesla. This is called Ooh. Shock. This is 180 gram. And it's twenty two ninety five, and I would imagine that it's more of that kind of uh, same. Well, I just kind of consider them sort of like seventies, eighties uh, stadium rock type stuff, right? Yeah, I can't say it's a very good album cover. Kind of reminds me of that uh, last Pearl Jam album cover, mm -hmm. Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, I think that you know they still have a lot of fans. I think they still you know do like those you know tours and stuff. So now you got new new material from them. So that ought right. to keep them on the road for a while. Yeah. Keep the Tesla heads happy. Okay. And now this I can't why don't why do I even bother to show it to you? This is Weezer <laughs> Black Album cassette. They're, they're sort of in there, but you know, it's yeah. anyway, 999 for that one. Cool. Now we have a well, White Snake Slide It In remastered, two LPs. Twenty-eight ninety-five. I don't believe that was ever two LPs before, so somehow it got extended. Does it give us any notes here? Original UK mix. Oh, original uh, US remix and the UK remix. Oh, okay. Remix. I guess so that's it why you, it's it two LPs. All right. Yeah, you're right. Same songs, but different mixes. Okay, and it's remastered, and it's White Snake. So okay, there y'all go. It's cool. twenty-eight ninety-five, and now we have Wild Reeds. Cheers. Uh, twenty ninety-five. Okay. Nice. And then we have Neil Young, Dead Man original soundtrack, and this is $25.95. Yeah, Neil Young still doing it. And it's a poetry reading by Johnny Depp, produced by Neil Young and John Hanlon. So Johnny Depp, I guess, is uh, buddying up with Neil Young these days. Interesting. Cool. Okay. So we are fresh off the back of our wonderful show we went to. Oh, yeah. That, oh. That's probably, I'd say, one of the best shows I've been to in a long time. I agree. Cherry Glazer blew me away, I yeah, have to say. So yeah. much fun. This was a... Uh, Definitely see them live. Yes. I think if you get the chance, you got to go check them out. Now they're down to a three-piece because, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't have the synth player anymore, so it's just a straight-up mm -hmm. guitar-based drums and uh, the amazing Clementine Creevy uh, kicking it all off. And, uh, well, they were wonderful. We had the best time. And thank you, Secretly Canadian and Secretly Distribution, for hooking us up. We really appreciate it. It was uh, fun was had by all. And, um, yes, yeah, speaking of fun had by all, oh, boy, there's a new show coming uh, to Paso Robles in July 5th. And guess what? It's Jim James opening for... Tell them. Uh, Claypool Lennon Delirium. See? So that is yes. going to be a little something for everyone. What a good show. I can't even wait. It's going to be bloody hot, though. July 5th out in Paso Robles. Woo! Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, see you there. That's going to be good. So. Nice. I'm trying to think any other any other shows. I think that's it. Yeah, looking forward to that. Claypool Lennon's been selling out here like crazy. Oh, yeah. So if you haven't heard that yet, apparently it's doing wonders. Well. I haven't really heard it all the way yet, but... Uh, all right. Well, that's like kind of a, you know, I'm, I'm happy that they're 
they're doing that show, but they're really the least of my concern oh, at this point. Boy. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they should be the, the support group, right? I'm actually well, surprised they're supporting Jim James. I feel like he's definitely bigger. I right? think so too, but you know, it's just I, I guess it kind of depends on what they're doing. But anyway, I'm happy either way. I can't believe it, you know, Jim James coming back around and uh so something to look forward to. Nice. All right, so we're open this weekend. We're from twelve till four. And uh so you can come in. Ashley and Eric are gonna be here and we got the new girl starting her name is Jordan so uh, you know you can come and say hi to her too and she's gonna be learning the ropes so other than that um, yeah that's it you good yeah all right what are you doing this weekend um what am I doing oh that's right I'm trying <laughs> desperately to this I do have a show actually there's a Japanese psych group called Kikigaku Moyo one of my all-time favorites. They're playing two shows uh, with Folkia at Fernwood. Oh! But it sold out, and uh, I tried emailing Lindsay from Folkia. She's like, "No, I can't get you in." So I was pretty mm -hmm. bummed. However, I just checked Craigslist earlier. There's someone selling some. I emailed them, so we'll we'll see. Oh, okay. Hopefully, well, I can get in because I need crossed. to go to that. That's yeah. gonna be really good. You know, you crack me up though. It's like everybody you talk about. Oh, one of my favorite bands of all time. <laughs> oh, Your shit. list is so long. It's almost <laughs> Cold like out, yeah. I think we're gonna have to make it's another true. drinking game. Game, another little side hustle <laughs> drinking game for you. You're gonna have people doing double shots on either side, on the experimental side or the my favorite band of all time side. Yeah, I just think you know maybe they're not my favorite band, but when you say that, people are like, oh wow. You, oh yeah, they, it's you must true. really like. <laughs> <laughs> so come and see Cass's favorite bands, and uh, yeah, Honore, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.